to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and shake his head. And I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. In Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 4 and verse 5 says, In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah together, with continual weeping, they shall come and seek the Lord their God. And they shall ask the way to Zion, with their faces toward it, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that will not be forgotten. In the book of Psalms, 132 and verse 13 through verse 16. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. And this is my rest forever. And here will I dwell. For I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Where is that? In Isaiah. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then in the book of First Peter, in First Peter chapter two, in the verse is number ah, six yeah. through verse number nine. On, well. Therefore, yeah. it is also contained in the scripture. Uh-huh. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him yes, sir. 
who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But the Hebrew writer, Paul, says, but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable hosts of angels. Woo. In Isaiah's day, y'all, traveling along the road, was often dangerous. The danger was due to ferocious animals, thieves, and natural obstacles, such as deep ravines and narrow paths on the sides of hills. Zion was built on a hill. It was surrounded on all sides except the north by deep valleys. It was a city that was built on a hill. Are y'all listening to me? To save me a bit of time, let me say that in the New Testament, Zion refers to God's spiritual kingdom. And today, you and I are on the king's highway that's leading to Zion. What is the way to Zion? I'm determined, y'all, to get there. Quickly, there are some, some hazards that hinders us as we travel to meet our Savior face to face. How do we get on this path to, to Zion? Well, God has sent his son to lead the way for us. God's son has pointed and promised us the right way. Listen to it. He says, I am the way. You looking for the way? Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And no one goes to the Father but by me. And so we, 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 we must hear the truth about the right way. Everybody around here is trying to say that they are the way, but they might be the way to somewhere, but they are not the way to God's kingdom. And so the only way that you and I can get to God's kingdom is that we follow the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ tells us that we have got to hear what Jesus says in order to get on the right path. And not only must we hear it, my friends, we must believe it. We must believe it. We must believe it with all of our hearts. And it should cause us to repent. We should give up that former way of life that was not right. That was going the opposite way in which God would have us to go. And then to get on that road, we must be baptized to wash away our sin. Yeah, you know something? If there is sin in your life, then you cannot get on that road. You cannot get on that road of sin is in your life. Only those that can get on God's road to Zion, there is no sin in their lives. And we must live a, a godly life forever. And if you fail, then you must confess your sins. You must confess your sins if you fail. But then secondly, we must live a life of truth. If we follow men, talking about people, well, and their traditional dogmas, we will stumble and lose our way. Well, what am I talking about? Well, I think that it's about time that 
we be uh, plain. So I'm talking about mother. I'm talking about father. I'm talking about sisters and brothers and friends. You see, they make up these people. In other words, when we are following people and their dogmas, we might be going in and every way, but we're not going God's way. And the Bible teaches us that we must be going God's way and not people's way. In the book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse number 6 through verse number 9, and he answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, he says, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching us doctrine, the commandments of men. We have got to be careful, y'all. And we cannot let people be uh, spreading this false doctrine around. We have got to be telling the truth so individuals can follow the truth. We cannot follow mama. We cannot follow our fathers. We cannot follow our friends. We cannot follow anybody if we're going to follow Christ. And so our creator has given us the freedom to choose. I like that. I like that that, 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 that. that you have the opportunity to choose which way you want to go. And my friend, let me say this. That if you end up going to torment with Satan, that is your choice. That's not God's choice. That is your choice. And God has given you the choice of whether or not you want to spend eternity with him or else spend eternity in hell. The choice is yours. God has provided us the way and the truth. And it's up to us to choose. You see, even we who know the right way must never play the fool. The fool, even on that right road, is senseless, and he lacks wisdom. Ain't that something? In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, and verse 1 through verse number 3, listen here as the writer says these words. Dead flies... Cause the oil of the perfumer to send forth an evil odor. So does a little folly outweigh wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Ye also, when the fool walks by the way, his understanding fails him. And he says to everyone, that he is a fool. My friends, we have got to be careful. We have got to be careful because uh, I have seen so many times people that's in the right church, they end up going to a denominational church. Why? Because they see somebody that they like over there. A good looking woman over there. A good looking man's over there. And so because they are over there. We're going to go over there. And that's a, that is folly, y'all, well. to go and do anything like that. And then, finally, uh -huh. we must live the life. Come on. You see, first, we have to study to show ourselves approved. Yes. And then, second, you must work out your soul's salvation. You just can't come in. I see it all the time, y'all. People coming into the Lord's church, and they just sit. They don't do anything. They don't teach Bible classes. 
They don't do any soul winning, even to their families. They don't try to ever talk to anybody about coming into the Lord's church. They don't try to do anything. They think they're going to heaven by coming into the church of Christ and just sitting there and, and maybe tipping the Lord and going on and acting like they want to act for the rest of the week. My friend, I tell you, that's not the way to live in God's kingdom. And then thirdly, you must worship God sincerely. Man, I see so many times that people come into the lost church and they're not sincere. They're not sincere at all. And it hurts a lot of times. You might not say anything, but I know you hear what I hear. You be sitting beside someone and they might say, I sure hope that preacher don't stay up there long. My, my, my roast is going to burn. Well, or somebody else say, I sure hope he don't stay up there long. My story coming on today. Yeah, come on. It's just all kind of foolishness like that. Come on. And that means that you're not sincere. You did not come to worship God in spirit and in truth. What you have come to do is just try to keep people off of your backs by just coming in and singing a few songs and tipping the Lord, listening to a message that you want to hurry up and end and then go on home. But that's not worshiping God sincerely. And I tell you this morning that you must be sincere. Amen. You must be sincere when you come to worship God. You don't need to have your mind clouded with a lot of foolishness when you come to worship God. And then fourthly, you must be a soul winner for Jesus. Man, you have got to win some souls for Jesus Christ. And, 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 and you know... Uh, all you got to do is just, is you just share. There are so many people out there in the world that is looking for the real thing. And, 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 and you never know when you might be the individual that they will listen to. But you won't open your mouth. You won't share with them. You won't be a soul winner. You think that you can't do it. You might be the very one that can do it. And so that's why you need to share the word of God. And despite all of this, we do have a responsibility to go after those who err from the truth. In the book of Matthew and chapter 18 and verse number 12, he says, how thank ye? If any man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go unto the mountains and seek that which goes astray? In other words, brethren, a lot of time when our brethren leave us, man, we say, I'm sure glad to get rid of him. I'm glad she's gone. No, that's not the spirit that you and I should have if we're Christian. If we're children of God, that is not the kind of spirit that we ought to have. We ought to be going out and we ought to be looking for God's people. And we ought to try to encourage them to come back home before it's too late. One of these days is going to be too late. And brethren, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. And, and I don't even think I'm going to need this. But I, I'm going to tell you right here. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you have really been paying attention to our news. But I, I, I believe that we are on a head-on collision with several of these other nations. Because we have a fool in the White House. I hope he can hear that. Not only do we have a fool in the White House that do not know what he's doing, 
But over in North Korea, we got another fool that don't know what he's doing. And if you come on around to Russia, we have another fool that don't know what he's doing. You go around to Iran, and we got another fool that don't know what he's doing. We're going to start shooting. I believe that might be the way God's world comes to an end. And it's going to come to an end. And I don't know if that's going to be the way or not. But we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to, we need to start living like Christians ought to live. We ought to start doing what Christians ought to do. We ought to start saying what Christians ought to say. And we can call out to this lost sheep. We can even go after them to rescue them. But we need not look back longly yeah. to any of the path that may have held all manner of earthly treasures for us. Yes. You know, a lot of times we have people that constantly thinking about what it would have been. Man, if I'd have stayed out there in the world, on, what would it have really been like? Would I have this or would I have that? Would I be rich? Would I be, well, how would I have been if I had just stayed out there in the world? We don't need to be looking back. Brethren, we need to be looking forward. Every last one of us need to have our hearts looking forward. What's forward? Heaven. Heaven is forward. And you know, I, I, I love what Paul said. And let me just, and it's not even in my lesson, but I just want to share it right here. I'll be just as quick as I can with this. But in, uh, in Philippians, yeah. I, I, just, I, I just want you to just get this. Philippians chapter uh, 3. And, and he says, here, he says, Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the other call of God in Christ Jesus. Quit looking back. There ain't nothing back there for you. Everything you need is before you. Heaven is before you. And you need to be going with all of the gusto you have. Going to try to do what God would have you to do. Live like God wants you to live. And then if you do that one of these days, boy, this world is going to be over with. And it will be all over. Some of us are running. A marathon on that road. Well. Others are jogging. Yeah. While many prefer to just walk. Well. Still, and there are those who are doing their best just to crawl. Yeah. However, in this world's spiritual wilderness, we have our guide. We have our map. We have our compass and our food and our water, our light, and straight path to follow home. Jesus Christ, the word of God. Listen, Robert Frost says these words, the road not taken. He says, two roads diverge in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, be passing there had warned them really about the same. Well. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no steep, 
no steep, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the other for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two rows diverge in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all of the difference. That sounds like another passage of scripture that I want to close with this morning where Jesus says, enter ye in by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are they that enter in by it. For narrow is the gate, and straight is the way that leads unto life, and few are they that find it. I don't know if it's about you this morning. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Or, or do you want to find Zion? Are you determined this morning to find Zion? And then when you find it, would you stay on that road? Would you stay on that road until you get to see God's face? And, and when you see God's face, would you be able to stand and look with a smile on your face? And be thankful for the opportunity that you have to go into heaven. Or would you have to stand there and listen as God opens the book. Because the Bible says the books are going to be open. And would God open the book and start reading all of those things that you are guilty of. Those things that you were not forgiven of because you did not ask God to forgive you and turn away from living that kind of life. And then once he finished reading, right. then you drop your head and you sadly walk away. We should be those that are like those that are looking for Zion. And they are determined to go to Zion. I think each one of us that are gathered here this morning, we are on our way to Zion. We might be crawling, some of us. We might be walking, some of us. We might be jogging, some of us. And some of us might be running. But boy, we're on our way. On our way to Zion. And as many of us that can get on that road, let's get on there and let's run with all of the guts that we have and never look back. Keep looking forward and one of these days we'll be able to see God's face in peace. Won't that be a glorious day? That'll be a glorious day. Thank y'all so very much.